I have been trying for hours and hours to get this video off, <laughs> but I got interrupted by an old friend dropping by after hearing the kerfluffle about me going on. <laughs> A little concerned. It was so nice. I hadn't seen him in years. And uh, nice to know my friends know who I am. <laughs> and nothing's changed. No, not a fascist or a conspiracy theorist. I've been duking it out with them, believe me, <laughs> since I called out Q. And I have been for so long. I'm getting hammered. And that's okay because the whole idea was to shake the tree and shake it out because that misinformation is doing us no good right now. Absolutely not. I get so frustrated because I'm at this pretty relentlessly. I'm living and breathing it every day. And when I see misinformation, I get pretty upset because it's all these senseless details that have people believing that Donald Trump is gonna save us here in Canada that's really screwing up our movement. It's leading people to false conclusions. And again, my job is to go and blow up the tower because we all need a tower moment. It forces people to get honest, just like the measures did, same thing. We have a pension here in Canada, and really in the Western world, political correctness has taken over. And it stopped us from talking to one another, not wanting to rock the boat. And what it created actually is gossip, worse than a party line in the day. I hated that. Well, we also listened to everybody's conversations. And this experience in social media has taught me that it's nothing but toxicity. The gossip and the funny thing as you get into it more is you discover that it's troublemakers interjecting it like in China, like the 50 cent army. Injecting stories and slights and then downright nasty stuff. It's crazy. I just kind of think like, don't you have people have something better to do all day? And in the meantime, we're diving in. And this week, uh, it's already been great. I had a interview with a gal, a mom, and we talked about some issues with the mask and just being a mom in this time that's unprecedented. Tomorrow night, I have an interview with the angry Albertan, eight o'clock mountain time. Yeah, live. And I'm gonna put it through mine, we'll share it over to my feed, and then of course to No Mask Sask. And love it if you guys would fling that out to live because this is gonna be really cool. We're gonna be talking a lot about Agenda 2030. And I've wanted to talk to him for a while because uh, I, I He's very active and he speaks my language and we're all learning from each other and so exciting. Friday, uh, I have a guy from Alberta, from Calgary, and he's been arranging protests, the Freedom Walk, and he's gathering quite a crowd. But what I like is he's taking on media and they are protesting outside of CBC and they're adding the other culprits to their list coming up. And we're gonna talk about the media manipulation because I'm living it. Again, CBC this time decided to, well, use that pennycock psychologist, or not a psychologist actually, he's out of, the University of Virginia, but I'm going to actually tell you who this guy is. Now, I did look on the college, Saskatchewan College, a psychologist, and he's not there. He's not an accredited psychologist. This is the same guy that 
Connor from Global hired to create a piece on masks that he seemed to do independently. I found that on YouTube. And then a few days later, Global News did a five minute piece on No Mask Sask. And of course they used us in that other piece too. And well, he was psychologically analyzing and of course spewing his rhetoric because again, he's not a psychologist. And it was funny because CTV got their hands on it and they got him. Actually, no, first it was CBC, CTV, sorry. It went from the global guy, Connor, independently to CTV in which they did a five minute piece. And then it went to global again. It's crazy. CTV wanted to do an interview with me um, regarding why I started No Mask Sask and I didn't get back to them that day because I don't react to snapping of the fingers. And of course I didn't want to do an interview because they always screw me over. And they seem to have a vendetta. <laughs> Anyway, CVC did it on cross-country checkup. And what they did was they went in and they harvested a member of our group, but I didn't know about it. it kind of sucked because I heard about it on Saturday and it was already done. I thought she had another segment coming on Sunday. And I didn't quite understand what was going on. I was on the run to a protest in Saskatoon. In any case, she didn't realize, and she did a beautiful job, she did. Um, she was the conservative woman from Saskatchewan, but she didn't realize where the whole thing was going to go <laughs> and how could she? They started out with her. Then they brought in the retired nurse in Rosalind, a mask maker saving lives. And of course, really focused on her position. And that was interesting. And in between all these segments, they had this infectious disease dude. Now this award-winning journalist on CBC on Cross Country Checkup, which is supposed to be an award-winning show. In fact, as it rolled down the line and got to Pennycock again, his name's Pennycock. I just like to play around. <laughs> Actually global. When they interviewed him the first time, they actually had Pennycock and I screenshotted it and then I used that. So again, I'm just playing around, but his name is Gordon Pennycook, the non-psychologist that likes to analyze. Any case, as that CBC thing rolled, it ended up getting into conspiracy and it was all about having people in your life that weren't listening to common sense and that weren't listening to the government line, that were questioning the information. Again, leading us right to conspiracy. It's very frustrating, I can tell you. <laughs> I went through it and then you dissect it. But at the end of the day, what he's saying isn't reflective. And it is a trilateral media effort to hit no masks. Because we were the organization that's not really an organization, we're a Facebook group. <laughs> they are coming at us. Every one of them hit us. And in fact, they referred to no masks being in BC. And that was weird because we don't have no masks in BC. Not yet. <sighs> in any case, this doctor, Penny Cook, I'm gonna tell you, here he is. I am an assistant professor of behavioral science at the Hill Levine Schools of Business at the University of Regina and as an associate member of the Department of Psychology. Again, not listed or accredited. 
in the Saskatchewan College of Psychologists. That's how it rolls, my friends. Hit jobs. We're rolling along. We've got some great interviews coming up. Meeting a whole lot of people. I saw something interesting uh, yesterday, and that was... Okay, so I've been talking about the fact that there's not one political party that I'm seeing so far that is talking about Agenda 2030 and the concerns of this group. The mask is only the beginning, you guys, because Agenda 2030 was exactly where I was going before all of this nonsense began. It was to educate you about what was coming that I thought I had five years to do. And of course, this disruption of the virus was exactly what they needed. And we've shifted into mode. So here I am doing this again. It's gonna get juicy because more and more we're getting the tangible coming out. Those real life examples, like the nonsensical rules in school or distancing in soccer. All of these rules are literally changing the nature of our sports, our games, our culture. How we relate to one another. And we've never had a say as Canadians. Never. Right now we've got this election that's a fraud because they're not discussing lifting the state of emergency, not one. To have a state of emergency, you have to have probable cause. And there is no probable cause here. We've got to get moving, my friends. Again, we're shaking it out. <laughs> and we're starting to come strong between our provinces. Yesterday, I did see a political party come strong. And I'm going to talk about it. I don't know a lot yet, but it was the Maverick Party. .ca. Apparently the Wexit rebrand, which I found very interesting. Again, I've never really followed uh, separatists or any of that. I haven't because I love my country. But the stakes have changed, my friends. The only way out of this is out of the UN. And I've been saying it. And the Maverick Party kind of bedazzled me a little yesterday because their new rebrand and their website talks all about Agenda 2030. And that is the most excitement I have felt in a while. So I want to find out more, of course. But the fact that they're addressing this says that their solution is getting out. We have to part company with the UN if we want any semblance of our Canada that we had before. I don't think we have time to take the rest of the country with us. But we need solutions. I'm gonna take this election time and this time getting there because we don't have anybody in place to, well, take them all to task. Every single one of them. I'm going to make them get honest and that's going to be my fun for the next couple of weeks. You'll have seen my ads coming out, sort of equating the all one nature of the fact that Shabab is right here. You know, he's the, he's the head honcho. And then we have the leaders down here with the handcuffs. <laughs> and then Agenda 2030 in the middle. I'm having fun creating those. Because the people of Saskatchewan are not recognizing exactly what's going on. It's being hidden from us. And every politician is keeping it, well, on the lowdown. Because if you open up that can of worms, it's going to explode. And when people of Saskatchewan understand that everything that's happening right now is to set us on course to this agreement that we never had a say, well, I don't think they're going to be too happy. 
Let's use this momentum, people. Let's get on these keyboards and start sharing. And I'll tell you, my little ads are getting shared, so that's really exciting. We have the power right now. We have to stop sitting back and waiting. And even if you can put in a couple of five minutes on CBC, CTV, Global, whenever you can to sort of just come in behind and give the people that are on those feeds a little push, that would be really appreciated. And again, just make sure that some of the things that are said are countered. Because you gotta know, they've got people doing that and they're paying them. <laughs> we have to rely on volunteerism. And that is how we start creating action.